I'm Mitch Lockyer Lane, and welcome to the next instalment of Riedel's Highlight Series, where we have been focusing on the arts and theatre industry. We had the honour of hosting this episode with John Whiting, Infrastructure Manager at the Sydney Opera House, and we'll discuss the evolution of technology in the arts and entertainment space over the last decade. Today we have with us John Whiting from the Sydney Opera House. Thanks, John, for coming and having a chat to us about your experience at the Opera House and, and prior to that and what you're looking at beyond. Uh, how are you today? Um, well, thanks. Thank you for the invite. Excellent, excellent. It's great to have you here. So you've had an interesting and varied career over the last 15 years. Can you walk us through what you've done in the past and give us a bit of an overview about your current role? Yeah, sure. I guess it all started when I was uh, pulling apart my toys as a kid. Um, I have an interest in electronics kind of made itself apparent and I studied that after I finished high school. I uh, got, a, got a qualification in electronic engineering and, and had a few jobs that were not in the entertainment industry. Um, more, uh, I worked for the, the South Australian Police Department for a little bit um, uh, and then I went to work for a company called Tech Rentals and I was there for a while as a calibration technician. All these things not nowhere near as exciting as uh, the entertainment industry but I did end up sort of merging my personal hobbies which was kind of music production and audio with my work which was uh, through getting employment at a company called Jans where I met you. Yes. Was there for five years um, and after that I kind of decided that I wanted to change and a job at the Opera House was was advertised and um, was actually really lucky timing. Um, but I did want to work at a venue. I hadn't worked in a venue at that point before. I'd only sort of worked as a, as a contractor as such. Um, and that's, yeah, one thing led to another. Lots of things changed really quickly at the Opera House. We had a, we had a restructure where we wanted to merge the IT team and the, the theatre technology team. So this, this technology department was created. Um, and out of that, I sort of, I ended up in a, in a role as the networking communications manager. Um, I had to pick up IP networking very quickly. Um, and I did, and I spent a lot of late nights doing that. Um, and I really enjoyed it, actually. It was kind of, I was never interested in IT as a, when I was first in, in into uh, electronics, but I kind of, you know, you start realising that everything works on IP and, every, and over that period of my life things changed that way. So it became a really attractive thing to learn about IP. Um, and, and then we had another change where the infrastructure manager left for, uh, he was seconded to a role. Um, I'm actually still sort of temporary infrastructure manager at the Opera House currently. Uh, so the infrastructure role at the Opera House is, um, is theatre and precinct, data centre and network teams. There's three teams that I look after and we look after the, the, the obviously the production events, um, the building team, the food and beverage, the tourism team, uh, the corporate team. And how do you see the role of IT has changed in the last five years, and particularly in the, at the Sydney Opera House? I think IT has become uh, central, and for most production and creative teams, it's sort of becoming a, a base skill set. Um, Audio and video are relatively late to the game for IP adoption when you think about uh, streaming ACN and, and uh, Profinet and these types of protocols that are used in, in stage automation, they've been around for quite a while. But yeah, I guess a major role IT is playing at this particular time for us is uh, the digital outreach that we have. We, uh, we're looking to focus on, you know, particularly with COVID and, and this situation that's going on at the moment, we're looking to keep in touch and uh, reach people in a way that we normally couldn't. Um, I think it's, it's not only the Opera House who's sort of adapting in this way, but we are doing a lot more live streaming, um, doing a lot more playback of pre-recorded content, uh, and also doing a digital education program, which is more about an interactive kind of uh, video conference between schools, sometimes multiple schools, and, a, and a, a virtual tour guide walking around the Opera House. And do you think in terms of this, this transition, I guess, off the back of what's happened with, with COVID-19 and, and more of the uh, virtualized solutions that you're trying to provide as part of this outreach, do you think that you'll see a lot more of that happening within the Opera House? Uh, is this something that, I, I guess, off the back of not being able to have these productions and have people in and, and yeah, okay, this might be changing in the, in the near future, but certainly not being able to have that, do you think that a lot of these Maybe the, the production companies themselves, but, but in particular the Opera House are going to push towards having this type of virtual technology or the, the ability to have these virtual events and virtual productions? Yeah, for sure. I think it's inevitable. I think at times it there's a bit of a, I guess, a, a back end to it in terms of uh, who's got the rights to the to the content and all that sort of thing. But it's I guess if it's at the forefront of everyone's mind, um, from the client to, to us, um, it's something that I think we'll gravitate towards for sure. And so at the Opera House, you were talking before about the 
we call them kind of immersion technologies, but again, as you said, you know, we, we were talking about Cobranet and, and ABB and so forth like 10 years ago, and now it's coming to AS67. Obviously, the AS being more of a standard or a standardised system that's being put into place by these industry bodies, do you see that the Opera House would be more inclined to put future technologies on based on standards? Yeah, for sure. It's, it's kind of um, at the core of what we try and try and spec specify at the beginning of a project or at the beginning of a system design. Um, sticking to engineering standards just, you know, makes sure that things are going to work the way you expect them to. Um, if they don't, then the, there's an onus on the on the manufacturer to, to adhere to those standards and, and fix the problem. Um, it's a very great and effective mechanism for, for manufacturers, yep. And is that something that has traditionally been at the Opera House, that they have always tried to, as much as possible, stick to these standards, from, from your perspective, obviously? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> it's, um, I think it's something that everyone, as, a, as an engineer or, or a, a technical person, people tend to gravitate in towards that. Um, the, there's also kind of widely accepted protocols, you could call them, um, but as a general rule, we, we try and stick to the standards, yeah. Yeah, cool. That's that's fantastic. And uh, uh, from what we've seen and, and the way the industry trends are running, we're definitely moving towards an IP-focused way of getting not only just audio around, but video around. So you mentioned 702110. Uh, obviously, that, again, is one of those standards that, that you know people are looking to implement as part of their product set. So we'll have different manufacturers looking to put in, you know, the the... 702110, whatever flavor of, of 2110 that they're, they're trying to implement, whether that's audio, video, control, whatever it happens to be. Um, is that something that, that really has kind of become more prevalent in your role in being able to roll out a lot of those types of IP-based solutions for the event side, but still having you know this whole layer of well, we have an IT department as well that we need to we need to manage and you know everything else that that comes with that IT department. Yep, yeah, for sure. I think it's um, it's historically a, a mindset that goes along with each of those technologies and um, trying to adapt to the theatre environment to the IT mindset has been a bit of a challenge. Um, I think it's exciting for the for the IT team and. Conversely, I think it's, um, you know, the theatre team are quite excited about learning these technologies as well. So it's not hard in terms of rallying the troops and, and getting everyone interested in those things. Um, that comes naturally, the, the priorities there come naturally when, uh, when people are familiar and, and aware of, of that. And, you know, the Opera House puts on events, that's what we do. That's our core business, but um, that being said, if you come to work every day and traditionally you're, you're uh, keeping an eye on the exchange server or something like that, then you don't really think about the events and even though you're right in the middle of it. Um, so yeah, I think the exposure there to the team is important. Yeah, so obviously that, that means that your, your, your teams or the, the team that you manage is really about providing that, that support and quick response around those internal and external stakeholders. And the Opera House being such a, a you know, it's a, it's a fairly large environment in terms of how you get around the Opera House and, and uh, the, I guess, all of the different uh, areas of the venue that you need to be able to get to, is having that ability to transport a lot of what you need to do from venue to venue or from place to place, does, does that play a, a big role in the types of technologies that you put in? In terms of the, the physical design of the equipment and portability and all that sort Correct. of stuff? Yeah, yeah um, for sure. I mean, we we try and keep up with the changes and, and we have a production warehouse and we're currently in this downtime looking at just improving the way things are racked up and there's obviously booking systems for events so you need to think about how ready it's going to be for a booking which I'm sure you guys in the in the warehouse at Rita were familiar with um, but yeah we're looking at that and we're looking at you know we're constantly reviewing these things we're looking at presenting certain connections in a way that um, you know, where a, a plastic RJ45 modular connector or, a, or an LC connector on fibre isn't, isn't presented um, in, that, in that sort of traditional IT way. It's, it's got an ethicon or something like this and it's, um, it's kind of resilient and all packaged up and ready to go and, and ready for the right types of connections for that environment. Yeah, definitely. And when we have a look, I mean, obviously there's been a lot of changes over the, the past five years at the Opera House. We've seen, you know, d some major changes to, you know, what's happening with the concert hall and JST and so forth, um, with with the upgrades that are, that are currently happening. What do you think has been the biggest challenge and the biggest change of technology during these developments? 
I think the biggest change might be the the shift into. Uh, I mean, there's a shift into the application layer that's happening where previously companies and AV is a good example with you know the Crestron or AMX of old. There's sort of it's a little bit of a closed system. Um, there's not there's not a shared expertise. Um, whereas now everyone is about being able to talk to everyone else. Um, everyone's about open API connectivity, uh, extensibility, and orchestration. So yeah, these things, the orchestration side of it is obviously helpful when it comes to keeping the task at hand, you know, focused on what you need to do because IT IP networks are quite complicated and uh, you need that ability to have a dedicated piece of software to talk to a system and do multiple things at once. Yeah, that's great. So when when we're talking about um, being able to to have it as, as easy as possible to configure, I mean, that's that's something that obviously in the past hasn't really been a challenge as such because we've always just had hard panels that you'll be able to have buttons on and, and things that you can press and you know they most most buttons will have a function right or some type of function that you've previously programmed and, and the user will actually know how that works. Do you think you'll see a shift to more customized solutions coming out from not the vendors themselves but actually the users? and how they go and approach a show or, or how they approach the technology itself? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, I mean, it depends on, on if the product that you have solves all of your problems for that particular function. Um, we certainly have used, you know, the, some of the serial strings and GPIOs in, in Riddle Artist of Old, um, and we could definitely find ways to use a, new, a newer way to do that. Um, we, I mean, QSys is a good example of an AV product that we use where we, we have utilised some, some API calls and things to, to control PDUs and uh, that's, a, that's a great product that has allowed us to solve some problems where previously we would have looked for, um, you know, a, a bespoke solution or an or a external contractor to design something for us. So yeah, I think giving, empowering an, an organisation to solve their own problems where previously they, they may not have been able to is, uh, is kind of exciting, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it, I guess that comes up, kind of brings up a, another question. So in terms of when troubleshooting products, obviously, you know, a lot of this before was done where you would go to the actual product and, you know, there would be a hardware thing or you'd have to actually physically cite the product to understand what you need to be able to troubleshoot. Now with everything moving to more of a, an IP-centric platform, has that now changed your job in in actually like servicing these things mm, for sure yep um i mean i guess the the stage management system we have at the opera house is five years old now but um when that was designed it was designed with a future thinking mindset i think and uh, you know we have remote servers terminal servers that we can log into from home um if we need to qsys has a, a similar functionality with our our new function center which is actually looked after by a third party, but they, they have that functionality and QSIS provides some really good remote support options as well. So um, anywhere where we can work out what's wrong with the system um, and help someone on the floor, um, if we are at home or if we're not at work or if we're even just at our desk, um, it's, a, it's a very beneficial thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, excellent. So with, uh, with the Opera House, you obviously have a significant amount of media net from Riedel. What are you using that for primarily? We're using it mainly to get video feeds from the venues, camera feeds from the venues back to the recording and broadcast department, uh, recording, recording and broadcast facility, I should say. But we also use it pretty extensively for the stage management system. So there's, there's a whole bunch of uh, controllable visual foldback for the stage manager, create quad splits for, um, yeah, it's that kind of sums up in a high level what we use it for. Yeah, cool. And obviously, you know, moving to, to a digital platform, especially, you know, we, we had a, a conversation a little while ago with, um, with Ollie from the uh, Adelaide Festival Centre and he said one of the big things for him was moving to Medianet gave them the ability to have a low latency video feed directly to the conductor or whoever it was because prior to that, when moving to a digital platform, you had a lot of latency that was built into some of the products that were available. So is that something that, that's been of advantage to you? To the yeah, for sure. Yep, we, we trialled um, the conduct, Conductive View uh, system when the JST was renewed, the Jones Sutherland Theatre was renewed a few years ago and uh, we wanted to move to digital monitors and, and the latency that that 
introduced as opposed to our old CRTs um, was of concern for the for the, the musicians and they have a very good ear for this sort of thing so um, for sure it's, it's definitely at the forefront of our minds when it comes to uh, performer foldback, vision, visual foldback, yep. The Opera House has a significant amount of artist frames that really cater for each of the event or the venues that are, that are within the Opera House. And uh, I believe that those are all linked up together as well, so they create a, a big network together to be able to talk between each other as required. How do you think that, uh, that assists the venues when they do have quite a number of shows on? Oh, it's, it's great for, I mean, in terms of a, a daily sort of business as usual operation, we would have the venues operating largely in, in an island for each venue, but um, people, people obviously Bolero or, or previously Acrobat was, was integrated into Artist and people will be in the green room having, having their dinner and waiting for the show call uh, or, you know, an, an emergency scenery move or anything like that. Um, people can be on comms at all times um, for the larger talk fest uh, like Antidote or something like this where we have um, teams operating the whole venue and, and shows within these venues need to be timed together and synchronised together and uh, obviously then there's this cross cross opera house communication that happens and um, and that's very important. There's also calls for tech support, you know, the tech support channel is, we have a panel in the tech support office and a, and a panel at every front of house ops position and the stage management console and if anyone needs help they just get, get you on the comms and we have also have our comms, um, our readle comms integrated into the Motorola two-way system as well so that that gives no one an excuse to miss a call really. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it obviously makes it quite easy to be able to get anybody at any time because you are integrated within the within the entire system that, that's located in the Opera House. So it does make it uh, make it quite neat to be able to, to get to people. Yeah, the artist system is, is fantastic. It's one of those systems that we almost forget that it's there. You know, it just does its thing and never fails um, unless the power drops out. It's, it's, um, it's a bulletproof, yeah. All right, John, thanks so much for joining us here today. It's been great to have you here at uh, Riddle Communications in Sydney. Uh, once again, thanks for, for coming in and, and having a chat with us. Thank you. Cheers.